My name is Elizabeth Philippe. For six years, I've been traveling the world from two to three countries per month. Then I stopped because I had baby Wolfie. But after some life problems, I became a single mom when my baby Wolfie was only two months. Life is good, we're 100% of the time together. She's amazing! But I never felt like home in Canada. I'm not a winter girl and Wolfie either. My dream has always been to raise my kids in the beautiful country of Costa Rica and I'm now officially realizing it. So stay tuned because this is happening! Hi guys, so I'm currently sitting in my car since 7 a.m. and it's now 2 p.m. because I've been trying to film this video but it never ends up really well, like I say details that I cannot say or I cry too much, or it's just not working. Um, it's really a hard subject for me, I've been avoiding for over a year and well it's been a year now and now I was like okay I need to force myself talking about this subject because I really feel like if I tell more about my story, by the way it's a story about domestic violence uh, I just want to do like a trigger warning and in case you don't know me maybe well at least now you know um, I want to tell you more about my personal story because I really feel like it could maybe help some people with everything that happened in the past few weeks if you know or don't uh, so many things have happened related to this subject and a lot of people are expecting me to be this like speak person for the cause I wish I could help more to be honest and I'm not proud of myself for not having talked about it more in the past year but I also really needed that time uh, for myself to like process this story but now I'm forcing myself into it I know it's it's gonna be hard well it's been hard but I know when it will be done and out to like the world if I can say out there if that can help some people I'll just be proud of myself so I want to be I want to do it to have some positive coming out of it I'll start with my story and honestly I filmed it too many times and it just didn't work out so I finally decided to write it on here and I'm just gonna read it to you with explaining like at the same time so if I'm reading I'm sorry about that it's just that if I wasn't doing it this way I was just not doing it at all so I guess that's like the only way I can do it right now what I'm gonna read to you is more based because you know I'm still uh, waiting for a tribunal it's been over a year but it's still not like done yet um, so I can't tell you like very specific details but the goals of this video is really like to have you understanding why I never came out with like this story and why like how it felt all along why I didn't denounce it and why did I stay because I stayed in this relationship for almost a year like the relationship being this way for almost a year and there was always like specific reason why I wouldn't leave this relationship and I want to explain it to you so you understand better how it can feel to be in this relationship so I'll just start now so number one um, is because I was pregnant with his baby which is Wolfie right now first of all I want to precise that before I was pregnant our relationship was amazingly perfect actually it was too perfect we had been together for almost two years we had the same goals and there was even a meme between our friends like all of our friends were always like oh you're like the cheesy couple like the the never fighting couple that's so weird and i really thought like oh that's couple goals because you know we just we were just really never fighting and for a long time so i just thought we were a perfect couple at the time and then when we decided we wanted a baby, it took months and almost a year for me to finally get pregnant. When I did the announcement, it was really magical. And the next day, the vibe was already getting really weird and colder. And that's when it really all started. So I swear, like, when after the pregnancy announcement, it was like a flip. Like, really just like that. Like, everything had changed. Being pregnant with his baby was enough for me to stay with him even though he was psychologically violent with me. 
I was losing all of my self-esteem over all of the things that he would say to me, but I thought it was temporary. I really just thought he was stressed about the baby and me being intense sick with hormones because at the first three months like I was crazy sick like just in bed I couldn't even stand up to go get food so I kind of also felt bad for him because I was like oh that's like a very stressful moment for him to like process the fact that he's having a baby but also like the fact that he had to take care of me so I was really just taking everything on me and thought it would be temporary and come back to normal but finally it became worse and when it got physical at this point I was just so tired and mentally had been destroyed plus I was super sick while pregnant the first time I thought oh my god I must have done something wrong for him to explode and do that I need to control my pregnancy hormones because I at this point like I really thought it was my fault because I was putting too much on him Because yes, at this point, he had managed having me thinking all these fights were happening because I was annoying pregnancy hormones uh, and I didn't have the energy to think more because in the four, first four months of the pregnancy, I was so sick and just in bed all the time. Sorry if I repeat myself. I think I should just read and then explain at the end. But after the second, third time getting physical, It couldn't be just like a, oh, he lost control. I was also reali realizing that logically those fights were not really my fault. Finally, I was feeling better from the pregnancy and I had the energy to think more and be extra careful for him not to say or do anything bad, but he would always find a reason to fight. I started analyzing the fights more and I realized that the fights were often related to him trying to take control of me and me not letting him do so. For example, when he wanted money, I would say, okay, but where did you put the money I gave you three days ago? And then big fight. I talked to my best friend Milady and he would be like, you know how much I hate her, why do you still talk to her? She's this, she's that, na na. And he was also often fighting for small things with my parents. In those situations, I always thought like my parents were right. I agreed more with them, like logically. So the fact that I was not on his side was making him really irritated. Briefly, when I realized that, I decided I was gonna break up with him. I really thought about it before and wanted him to leave from my house father of my child or not, it was just over for me. I was not gonna stay with someone who is violent with me. Now, why did I stay with him after that? Because after that, we came back together. When I left him, some really big events happened and I cannot describe them at this moment because we're still waiting for tribunal. Um, but he ended up at the hospital and finally I had a professional in front of my face telling me he has this condition and that's why he's been extremely irritated lately but we will take care of him and he'll have this medication they told me I should not leave him for this which I completely agreed at the time because there was finally an explanation I felt so happy finally having the answers because all along I really thought he manipulated me because I like at that moment I thought okay so before I was pregnant he was acting and when I got pregnant he realized like oh she's stuck with me now that like I made her pregnant like she's gonna stay with me for sure so I can have my real personality come out and I thought that was it. But finally, I was told that the old him would come back and that he just needed my help. He was the father of my child and I really loved him still at this point. I was ready to do everything and I had pity for him. Like I wanted to be there for him because once again, it, it just felt like, okay, it's difficult for him. I wasn't thinking about myself anymore. I was just thinking I need to help him. Um... When we got home, it was much better for a month, but after that, it all restarted. But I was really staying with him because I had this mission of saving Wolfie's father before she was born. 
I was enduring all that while trying strategies to help him taking that medication, but he didn't want it because he thought it was a wrong diagnosis. It was just getting worse and worse, but for me, it was always time to try a new strategy. Like, I tried everything with his friends, his family, like, time after time, like, never working and so that's why I stayed with him all this time I was not telling any of this to anyone because in my head I was so convinced that it was temporary and I was put it, putting all of my hopes in what the doctor had said to me I thought if I was telling my friends or family that they would no longer like him and they would never want to see him again. I also wanted to stay with him and help him and I didn't want anyone trying to convince me not to. I was always doing my best to show how amazing he was because I was scared that people would hate him and that we couldn't be back to normal ever because it really felt like it like it really felt like if people knew that no matter what I would do to go back to normal, people would remember and hate him and I didn't want people be hating him. So that's why I stayed with him all of this time, uh, which now brings me uh, to the part three. Um, I'm just gonna go on. Finally, that brings me to the final moments when Wolfie was there. It was more clear than ever a danger for her. I can't tell you any details, but that was the most difficult time and I was really terrified. The first time... The first ever person to know about it was Christo and all of his music friends also. He was actually living in our basement for a short period of time and saw some stuff happening. I can't tell you details, but he really was Wolfie's angel guardian at the time. As soon as Christo knew, he directly, he directly talked to my dad and that was really the breaking point for me when my sister's boyfriend told me that my dad, who is my direct neighbor, wouldn't sleep at night, he would stay up all night every night to look by the window and make sure that nothing happened. The idea of forcing my dad in this situation broke my heart. I know how much he loves his child and I knew if something happened it would break him too. There was also Wolfie, of course, that I was just thinking about all along. At this point I started looking for help. Every time I it would take every time it would take me everything to finally make those calls seeking for the help but it always felt like there was a good reason not to help me I could be crying on the phone with him screaming in the back or acting weird and I would get the answer oh sorry you need to call this place instead and then when I call the other place sorry you need to call this place instead and do that like five times, like times after times, and finally being told, oh sorry, they give you the wrong number, we don't take care of your city. That was always like the final, the final answer. It was a bit my fault too, because I'd say everything to them about this story and what happened, but the only thing I wouldn't say is that he was physically violent. Every time they would always ask me, but was he physically violent? And I'd have this voice in my head, if you say yes, he'll be in trouble and he might want to kill you after. So every time I had like this moment of just not answering and then I would say no. And that went on for weeks till finally a really bad event happened and there was just no other choice. So that's when it all ended, that's like the night when I went to the police and after we had not seen each other again, um, that's when I finally made like this final step and told like the actual complete truth to everyone. And there was also this thing of like, people know us from like social media, so I didn't want like, every time I was talking to people, like even at the hospital, like People would be like, hey, you're Elizabeth, oh, I follow you on Instagram, like, oh, your baby, no, no, no. So every time it's like, 
it's not like oh I'm talking to a professional it's like oh I'm talking to like a follower or someone who knows me so I was always scared to say something and that like people would say that out there or I don't know it was scary but finally I made it and I've talked and now that brings me to the last part of this video now I want to tell you if you're in this kind of relationship know that it's not in your hands to change the person they have to do it on their sides and for themselves don't put yourself in danger ever don't be afraid to quit because the after cannot be worse if you talk to any professional don't lie don't protect him because that's what he had manipulate you to do so also something important that i personally feel that could help a lot people in this relationship out there during my relationship my brain had created something that is normal in this kind of relationship which is that i tend to forget traumatic moments like completely forget like something could happen the night before and the next day i know that something happened but totally cannot remember what happened it's like the whole event my brain was just on off completely and for that reason i didn't want to go see the police or anyone because i thought i was gonna look dumb and they would think like what like you come here and you have no idea what happened because i didn't know it was normal at the time but finally i realized that when you speak to the right people that works often with this type of case they know exactly what it is they know that it's normal and if there's anything about you that make you feel like you wouldn't be taken seriously don't focus on that they might explain it to you better and they have strategies to help you with it the process is not perfect in it it can be deceiving and you often feel left out but i swear as soon as you have managed to talk to the right people and that you're confident enough to tell them every single thing it will be better maybe if maybe my case is still open and justice hasn't been made yet but seeing my life back to normal seeing my baby happy and my parents in peace is just all that matters love love so that's all i wrote i'm sorry if i was reading the whole video i'm also not used to be reading like that but it was probably like i've been doing that for too many hours and it was probably the only way i could do it for now um so i hope you enjoyed and in december we have the tribunal i don't know it if it's gonna be pushed again hopefully not um and I'm gonna give you some news and I love you I know it was not like a nice video to watch necessarily first off it's not a nice subject and also 